Hey guys, it's Barry here. Today we're doing a 14.13 jungle tier list. So this is not a noob friendly tier list. This is for those of you who are experienced, who have played the game for quite a while, and who just want to keep up to date with the 14.13 uh, solo queue right now. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to talk 30 seconds to a minute about every single champion. We're just going to go right away with Kindred. Kindred will always be really good. Um, she's just a great scaling champion. She has marks. She's a marksman as well. She's really good at carrying games with her build. The items right now for Kindred are just straight up amazing. Crack it into collector is just like a solid, solid combo. And then you could just continuously go damage. Or the really annoying thing about Kindred, you can also build sort of tanky items. Kindred's broken right now, guys. Play Kindred if you know if if you have hands. Okay. Nocturne, on the other hand, you need less hands, but uh He's just broken, okay? Like, in solo queue, you just make everyone go dark, everyone loses their minds, and you can pick out anyone you want on the side. Now, it hurts that he doesn't have lethal tempo, but the thing is, Nocturne will always be broken because he can just ult someone on the side whenever he wants, and he farms really well. It's all about farming meta, guys. Farming is the key right now. Okay, so that brings us to the next champion, Udir and even Lilia. So we're just going to bring these champions together. They work, like almost identically, because their kits are similar, they're, the way their plays are similar. Um, Lily wants to hit level 6, meanwhile Udir just wants to get his item and wants to get objectives. Both champions just have really, really high tempo and great team fighting. Now, Udir is a bit more of a tank, uh, a, a tank versus like a carry champion. Udir works with his teammates. Meanwhile, if you want to carry, guys, pick Lilia or pick Kindred. Right now, those are the two best champions in the game by far if you want to carry. Okay, in all my tier lists, you'll see Kindred and Lilia. Okay, these are just carry carry champions. Really, really, really powerful. Scales well, team fights well, decent early game. You're not even that weak. And a big thing is again, jungle exp got buffed, so all these champions here can farm extremely well. So Amumu is going to be another staple of the jungle. Amumu team fighting is just like okay, you can be really good at Amumu. You can be really bad at Amumu. You're still going to be useful. Now a really good Amumu can do some crazy shit. I've seen some really in incredibly played Amumu fights. I mean, you go to the Lyandries and you can actually completely one-shot people. That just, just the power of, of Lyandries into full tank Amumu, you're just so impactful. Uh, your, your team fight's like unbeatable. I don't know. I, I play against Amumu. I play as Amumu. This champion is ridiculous. There's a good reason why he's always high win rate. If you want LP, you don't want to really overwork and you're okay with losing some games because Amumu's not a hyper carry. Amumu's champion for you guys. It's like, it's a staple in the game. Uh, there's a reason why it's always high win rate. Pick up Umumu if you're not trying to hard carry, but you do want to get some dubs. Siobhan is a bit of an interesting one. Okay, this champion has seen a lot of uh, a high higher win rates. Has seen a lot of high potential builds and whatnot. We could argue that Shivana deserves to go down a little bit, but ultimately what I'm trying to say here, guys, is Shivana farms well, does the same thing uh, as a lot of these other champions do, scales well, and ultimately does objectives extremely quickly. I feel like a really good Shivana player can actually dominate the map, like, really, 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 really well. With the new, like, the, all, all these, like, different builds, like Shoujin, I have into some, like, Navori first item, into, like, Landry's. It's just such an oppressive champion. If you've seen any high level players play Shivana, you'll see how powerful she can be. Take a look at her. If you don't like her, it's a really hard playstyle. If you don't like her, don't play her. But she's worth putting up here at least. Maybe she can drop down to A tier. Okay. That brings us to why all these champions are in A tier versus S tier. So a lot of these champions in A tier are just not as strong team fighters as the S tier champions. Now, some of the champions I'd pinpoint that could go up, in theory, could be Fiddlesticks, Zac. Um, these champions have great team fighting at the very least. But everyone else is like, you need to either play insanely well, for example, Diana, or for example, like Hecarim or Viego. You need to play insanely well for the team fight to be to be amazing. Um, or or like if you fuck up, like it's just gonna be a really, really hard fight. Versus again, like these champions, easy team fight, easy team fight, pretty easy team fight, pretty easy team fight. Kindred, you can fuck up and you're still broken as shit because it's just how powerful your early game is, how powerful your scaling is, and you have your ultimate. So like you have a lot of like safety fail, like, like a fail safe. Okay, so the A tier, and as you go down the tiers, it's like, okay, it's harder and harder to, con to consistently and to easily carry. So as we go down, it's like, damn, it gets harder and harder and harder to carry. Okay, all the way down to like, yeah, imagine trying to get carry a game as Sejuani. Imagine trying to carry a game as Trundle. Like, it's just like not happening. It's very difficult. Or the other reasons is like, okay, our, our, our early game is, is, is weak. Or our just champion, the items right now are just not powerful. So there's a bunch of different reasons why we go down and why we go down and go down. Um, but let's just jump right back to the A tier. So, 
Uh, we have Volibear here. So Volibear is is sort of seen uh, uh, more playability as items get stronger. Uh, and just like as jungling, uh, people people are more willing to farm but also fight. I, I would say Volibear has always had a good place. Um, he's just fucking strong. Okay, the, the problem with Volibear though is he can get kited really easily. So you have to be really smart about how you're playing Volibear. But dude, this champion does an insane amount of damage. It's really, really powerful. Pick him up if you enjoy a bruiser sort of style that deals a shitload of damage. And want you want to sort of snowball the early game as fast as you possibly can. Jarvin is a great champion. I see a lot of people building the Eclipse Jarvin. I don't think Eclipse Jarvin is the reason why Jarvin is so great. I personally think you build Sunder Sky, Black Cleaver, or Sunder Sky Shoujin. You want to buy CDR and HP. Now, the Eclipse feels great, and the extra damage it feels great, but I believe Jarvin is still a bruiser at its core. The same thing we'll talk about Viego in a second. I've been seeing some like, crit Viego, like ugly ass shit, or like even like damage, high damage build. Path. Guys, these champions were meant to be bruisers for a reason. Build them and they'll feel very powerful. So Jarvan's going to be a really, really strong champion for team fighting. And also his farm is not, like he can farm pretty well. So Ivern is a great team fighter, just like Jarvan, just like, just like all the rest of the champions. The thing about Ivern, why he's not S tier, because he technically could be, is because he's just not that easy to get the hang of. Um, and, and sort of bring Ivern to the top of the list. Um, I would say Ivan, Ivan and Fiddlesticks are both champions that are like, they're great. If you're a one trick, you are you have a really high chance of climbing a lot of elo, but like, you need to be a one trick. Now, in general, if you pick up Ivan, you're just like, damn, like, I got auto jungle. You can play Ivan and have a great, great chance. So don't feel bad to pick up Ivan. It's very powerful. The shield is always going to be OP. Daisy, fucking, I want to beat Daisy in the skull. Daisy's so broken. We need to remove that champion from the game, please. Anyway, this brings us to the next champion we need to remove from the game, Zyra. If you guys have played against a good Zyra in solo queue, you'll understand why Zyra is an A tier. If you guys have seen Zyra in pro play, you'll understand why Zyra is an A tier. She is so broken. She clears so fast. She can literally hit you from a screen away. She just summon plants and walks away. She's so annoying to deal, to deal with. The problem is, the reason why she's not S tier, is because she is simply not uh, consistent enough for people who are in the lower, lower, lower elos. So, unfortunately, um, like, like, she's in a general, general, like, across all elos as you get into like masters plus zyra has a lot of potential and lower than that like okay average player base zyra is still strong but there's a lot of problems with a ranged champion for a lower elo player so like a big thing a big emphasis is like you have a lot of more uh a lot lo i mean a lot squishier uh, lower elo players that tend to die you don't want to die okay so just zyra is good if you're really high elo if you're really good at staying alive really fast clear as well all right zin zhao is just a crazy jungler. Um, you go, you build that center sky. You just, you, you become tanky with your ult and everything. Like you just want to fight people. Since that was great, you want to run, run at people and just try and shit on them and fight them. And since that was amazing, I've done this series recently where I want you guys to full clear. I recently played a Zin Zhao game where you guys can watch how I'm full clear and Zin Zhao and still doing the same thing. You're incredibly oppressive. You can farm quickly. There's a lot of options on Zin Zhao. Uh, he's gonna be a great champion. Brand is um also like deserves some talk about maybe he could be s tier the reason why is he is just very difficult to play uh again the same reason why zyra is here and brand is here is like brand has so much potential to miss things you can miss your w miss time your e miss time your q i see a lot of people they don't know how to clear on brand with level two you can get your passive proc with only two spells people need to perfect the brand clear okay but with the items the same items the Lilius building same as brand building and similar items to to to, to zyra the black fire and landry's brand is just so powerful guys hecarim is really strong at the same time can be really 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 hard to play because hecarim actually has a lot of uh difficulty in team fights um you can't really 1v9 at the same time you can it's sort of like dependent on composition uh, i would say hecarim like is like sort of a hit or miss but overall his early game is great he clears really quickly he has he's pretty oppressive um in the most for the most part so hecarim definitely deserves a high place not s tier diego my favorite champion i love diego we all love diego diego's great I would I would almost always say Viego deserves to be S tier, but for your average player, if you don't know abilities, you don't know Viego's limits, you don't know how to play Viego the, the best way possible, it's gonna be harder to play this champion. But he's still so fucking broken when it comes to fighting. His clear is pretty pretty fast, and he excels at literally every part of the game. Do not buy crit Viego. Please go Kraken Borg into Sunder Sky Trinity Force into Bruiser. 
stair racks, etc, etc. I'm actually going to be posting a vehicle guide really, really soon. Hopefully, hopefully uh, within the next week or two weeks, we'll get the vehicle guide out. Really looking forward to that. Let's jump right into the next champion. We got Belbeth. Belbeth is really strong. Same, similar bruiser style. Her items are great. Now, we have seen Belbeth sort of like go up and down, up and down. Belbeth is a really consistently good champion if you're good, if you're good at Belbeth. Same thing with Kindred. If you're good on Kindred, OP. If you're good on Belbeth, OP. But for your new person picking Belveth up, it's going to feel like shit. Like, the way Belveth works is you need to know your E, your Q, and your limits so well. Like, did you guys know if you land your W, it gives your Q an extra reset. You have five Qs. Like, it's like, there's so many things with your E, with your passive, with just, like, so many small intricacies that if you miss on Belveth, champion becomes wor worse. Fiddlesticks, great, great champion. Again, like we talked about, really good in the team fighting, really good overall. But it's just a problem, the same thing with Ivern, it's just like, if you don't know your, your your fog of war angles, you don't know your old timers, you don't know your, your champion strengths, uh, and you get caught every now and then, like Fiddle Six is gonna be hard, man. Uh, but if you do know them, then Fiddle Six is very, very great. Briar, this is the fucking stat checker of the jungle right now, similar to Xin Zhao over here. These two stat checkers, motherfuckers, fuck these champions, brain dead, turn your brain off, go around people, auto them, amazing. Actually, Volbear will we'll include Volbear in here too. Stat checkers, just run at people, amazing. Briar's healing, ultimate, all this for clear, everything is great. Um, Zach, Diana, Kha'Zix. So, I won't lump these champions together, but I'm sort of debating as to whether Zach can go up or Diana and Kha'Zix can go down. So, that's just sort of my, my ideas right now. So, so, Zach is a great champion. Uh, he always will be a great champion. He's such a strong tank, and in team fights, he's fucking insane. Like Zach can actually solo carry team fights. I think the problem is people don't know how to actually play Zach. People are very, very unfamiliar with uh, how 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 you can use Zach E, how you can use Zach Q, how you can use Zach R. People don't understand the limits to Zach. So he deserves an A. He's really powerful, but he doesn't deserve like S. And he definitely wouldn't go into B tier at all. Then on the other hand, uh, this champion, uh, I've seen people absolutely fuck this champion up. I feel like a lot of time you like think you eat in, and then you tap your ult, and then you're just a shit stain. And it's like, oh, shit, I, I ulted on accident? Fuck, I'm the most useless champion in the game. I, I've seen that. I've done that. That's why it's like, dude, like, this champion is so hard to carry. But again, because of how quickly we clear, because of the items right now, a lot of AP junglers are pretty powerful. She does deserve to be in the A tier. Now, Kha'Zix is one of those champions where, it's, again, I think it's a hit or miss. Uh, a lethality Kha'Zix can be great. You can just 1v9 game, stomp everyone. At the same time, uh, if you don't get yourself snowballing, uh, Kha'Zix can be, feel very hard to play. So I know Kha'Zix got buffed. But ultimately, it's just not a very consistent playstyle, I'd say, because it's clear it's not that quick. And overall, um, the way terrain has sort of worked now with, with all these changes and the way, like, uh, just overall, like, it, it's just, like, harder to pick people because people have slowly over time gotten better at League. It's a similar reason why, like, Evelyn's down here, too. Uh, honestly, I'm coming to this conclusion that, like, people, as much as we want to flame everyone for being stupid are slowly getting better. I mean, come on, the game has been out for 14 and a half years, and it's been, like, played at, like, a professional level for a long time. People have, like, years of experience built up. It's like, go figure people are not going to die to this Kha'Zix gank, or this Kha'Zix, um, uh, like, Fog of War player, this Kha'Zix, like, bush camp. Um, so, still, some people will die to it, and still some people will, will fuck up, but, yeah, that's my thoughts on Kha'Zix. I think he has some potential, but not, not a lot. B tier is where we get into champions that are like, holy shit, you gotta play the fights like a fucking G. And if you don't, you're fucked. Um, so we have Nidalee at right at the top. Nidalee's great. Higher elos. Nidalee's great in lower elos. She clears fast. She does a lot of damage. But like, come on. You're gonna fuck up team fights. Uh, she's just such a hard team fighter. Same thing with Lee Sin. Uh, Lee Sin's great. Great early game. Great pressure. Just overall really strong. Really fun champion. Then team fights, very, very hard champion. Same thing with the Graves. Graves is great. Graves actually got buffed recently. Okay, so Graves is a champion that's like, yes, like we can play Graves. Uh, we can really be really oppressive with Graves, uh, especially since of these new buffs with more armor. I think it's armor. Maybe I, I don't even. I don't. No, it's not armor. I think it's just armor. Um, Graves is just a hard champion. You know, I feel like you play team fights bad on Graves, you just lose games. It's it's, it's fucked. If you don't have good team fights on Graves, you're extremely extremely useless. Uh, so all these champions here are just like fuck, man. Our team fight sucks, but our early game is great. Uh, so if you if you feel confident on uh, how well you are mechanically on these champions, then it's great. Otherwise, don't play them. Play A tier or S tier champions. So we have Shaco here. Shaco OP as shit in the early game, but again falls off as you go on. It's much harder to play team fights as Shaco. It's really predictable what you can do on Shaco. 
Um, and just overall, like you, you sort of lack damage, or you just have a hard time killing people at the end of the, at the end of the day. Nunu, uh, Nunu's good early game again. Gank, 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 and then later on, you're not really able to carry the game. You don't really have that much pressure anymore. You're sort of just like a tank. So versus like a Mumu, Mumu can like go and start fights. Versus like Udyu, Udyu can like one shot people even in the in the mid to late game. Okay, Master Yi. Always will be an okay champion, but the thing about Yi is like he can be kited way too easily. Uh, he can, like there's so much CC in the game now, and there's so much damage in the game now where I've seen Yi's just get exploded. Um, Yi does still deserves a B tier because he's still so fucking OP with the resets. Overall though, he's just not as powerful as he was before, especially with the nerfs. Even and, and if you guys really are curious to hear more about Master Yi, I really recommend go watch Scenarius. He knows the, the he knows all about Yi. Uh, like, whenever I think of Yi, I think just think of Scenarius now. Okay, Karthus is a wonderful champion, but does not deserve anywhere higher than B. Fortunately, you're not just an ult bot as Karthus. As much as we want to say, like, yeah, you just ult on Karthus, you need to clear quickly, you need to land Qs in fights, and you need to understand how to play off of tempo. So, I see a lot of people play Karthus, and they just, like, think it's like, oh, Karthus is so easy. And they just, like, clear camps insanely slow, they miss a bunch of Qs all the time. Guys, it's not that easy to play Karthus. Now, will you be useful if you tap your ult? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean you just get instantly shot up to S tier. You're strong, but not OP. Now, if you can min-max your Qs on Karthus, and you play it like Karthus does, the, the Twitch streamer, like, oh yeah, that your champion's fucking broken. If you play it like the highest, the best Karthus players, this champion can be broken. But for your average Joe, like, nah, this champion's like harder than fucking Ivern, bro. Like, it's actually really, really difficult. Okay, we have Elise. Elise is really impressive in the other game. Again, team fighting is going to be really difficult. You can dive people, you can get objectives, you can stumble the game, you get a lot of kills. But in the mid, mid late game, like you, you don't have any team fight potential. You just look at people. You like you have to be really, really smart. And I actually will recently, I'm, like probably tomorrow or even the day of, I'll, I'll be posting an Elise game. It was like, a crazy comeback. But it's just like man, like you have to play these team fights so well, so smartly. It's not intuitive at all. Okay. Elise is just hard time in the team fight. Rengar. Great early game, decent mid game, decent late game, decent kill threat, and overall just like a decent champion. But he doesn't really excel at one thing, I'd say. I would say like these two champions are very, very similar. And the reason why I put Rengar like like lower is, is because of the skill needed to play Rengar. Um, so again, a lot of these champions are like need to be very, very skilled. Like look at these right here. Like you need to have a decent amount of skill. Even all of these, you have a decent amount of skill. Except for like Nunu, Nunu is just useless. Um, and then on top of that, it's just like, like, fuck, man. If you fuck up on... If you fuck up what empowered spell you use on Rengar, the play's fucked. Rek'Sai, great early game. Gets shit on in the mid late game. You're really, really useless in team fights. Okay, it's very, very, very hard to play Rek'Sai in team fights. You get shit on. And just shit stain. Okay. Warwick is a staple of the jungle, like Amumu and like Nocturne. But after playing some Warwick in lower elos and after just seeing how a champion works... You can get kited so easily, and a lot of people don't know you can, like, hold your Q and, like, attach to them. Like, people don't hold their Q enough. Even when I was playing Warwick, I didn't hold my Q enough. There's a lot of things about Warwick that make him really powerful and make him S tier. And also, he's a stat checker like Briar, like, um, like Briar, like Zinzao, and like Volibear. But overall, it's just, like, he's a little more difficult to play. It's not, like, just so linear. Um, he's still great, but definitely, like, this champion is good noob stomper, but as you get higher elo, can be a little more difficult to play. Gwen. We've been seeing the skyrocket of Gwen. Gwen has always had a decent place in the jungle, and, and now people are starting to pick pick up more on Gwen. Man, Gwen is just a OPS like tank killer. Again, like you, you imagine playing against these champions, you're doing great. Or you're also great against these ranged champions because of your W. So it's just like, bro, what does Gwen lack? What Gwen lacks in lane is like she needs to scale. She needs to get items. In jungle, guess what? You can get your items. Gwen's really powerful. Pick her pick her up if you like find you, know, you want like a bruiser AP champion. That's not like Diana. That's not like Echo. That's not like um, honestly, that's like the oh, like Gragas. Like, um, you you want to play like a melee, like a melee uh AP AP champion. It's not like these two. Like, what actually is worth picking up? All right, the next champion we have is Vi. So Vi is really good with her ultimates, which is overall not that fast clear. Really not intuitive how you find Vi. She's really good in pro play. Really good in high elo play. But overall, it's just like she's a, she's she's a, she's good. Just off, off the ADC, off, off the mid laner, but like, you're not hard carrying games. Okay. And it's not easy to hard carry games. Because again, like, on Nidalee Graves, like Rengar, you can hard carry games, but it's not that easy. It's not that intuitive. It's not that just like, it's not simple. And again, we want to keep keep our climb simple. Keep what's meta all the way up here. Okay. Echo. Um, 
really powerful, but very, very weak in the early game. You need, to, you need to get your items, and if you can get your items as Echo, you can 1v9 in the game. If you can't get your items, it really, really sucks. A lot of junglers nowadays are just oppressive. So if you're playing Echo, it's like, damn, like we need to survive. Uh, alternatively, Echo is just like a... It's like a very, 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 like, easy to deal with champion if you have a lot of CC. So again, it's like it's like mastery. Like, man, if we got one, one, one piece of CC on you, bro, you're fucked. Your entire kit is, like, ripped. C tier and D tier. So I'm not going to talk too much about these two tiers. You can kind of see the... Uh, <laughs> What's going on here? Like, we got Poppy, Olaf, like, Gragas, Mordekaiser, Jax. All these champions sort of just, like, they just suck. Like, they're okay. They're not amazing. They're just better champions in A, in A, B, and then even S tier. Like, all these champions, like, like are just simply better. Like, play these. Play these. So, the, so like, all these champions are, like, just, like, don't play them. Like, they're just not that good. They're okay. All junglers are, like, okay. Um, in, in C tier, at least. Um, but just, like, play better champions. The same thing with D tier here, guys. Like, Please don't play Kiana. Please don't play Talon, Zed, Nefiri, Pantheon. Ramus is like... Maybe you can go to C tier, bro. Don't play this shit. 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 Like, Ramus, maybe, bro. Look, maybe maybe, maybe Ramus made, made the cutoff. Like, maybe. But all these other champions, like, don't play. It's just not worth it. Not worth your time. The reason why Kane's here, he's just shit right now. Like, overall, like, his, his items are not great. And, um, like, at least like, for red form and just even for blue form, like, it's just like... People, it just seems like Kane is just harder to play as, as again, similar to Cosix as the game has progressed. But overall, Kane just like has been hitting the fucking fan. I'm not even sure why. I've seen win rates. I've seen Karaspike complain about him. I, I've just like seen a lot of my students that I coach. Like, hmm, Kane just feels fucking weak. Someone can tell me why in the, in, in the description box below. I, I, in the description below. I, I don't know. Uh, but I definitely would not rank Kane that high. Talia just recently got hit, got her F14 with 13. I think this champion, like, was A tier, was even S tier before. She got hit pretty hard. Um, we'll see how she does. I don't think she deserves higher than C. Maybe, maybe B. But overall, Talia's clear got hit pretty hard, so it seems like she's going to be suffering a lot. Skarner, my friends, is sort of gutted. Um, they, they nerfed him well, well enough to actually push him to where they want him to be in the top lane. Um, his winner just doesn't seem that high. I think he has some potential in like really really high elo games or like Skarner's like good tank solution. Um but overall like Skarner's a great top laner, not no longer a jungle. Evelyn, okay. Uh, the reason why Evelyn's down here guys is she just fucking like is so hard to play in the early game. It's like harder than Echo, man. Like this champion, this champion is like so hard to play. Uh, like if you like people understand, oh shit, Evelyn's the weakest champion in the game, like, let me stomp him. And then and then later on in the game, in the mid game when you do get strong, People are just not good at closing out games as Evelyn. People don't understand how, how to pick people, how to play Fog of War. So Evelyn just fucking sucks. And the last champion I want to talk about here is Teemo. Go fucking watch how Manko climbs like Grandmaster. He might even climb to Challenger on Teemo. It's, it's incredible. Um, uh, uh, Teemo actually has a lot of potential, I'd say. Although, Manko did say don't rate Teemo higher than like a C. Uh, that's what he said. He said like Teemo's like, not that great. But honestly, like guys, like if you don't want to troll and have some fun, watch how Manko does it. Like, actually, like, bro, like, back in the day, I did play Teemo in the jungle to troll people, but low-key, like, it worked. Like, back in the day, like, fucking season 6 type shit, like, when, when like, it wasn't even, like, meant to be a jungler. Because uh, you guys didn't know, like, Teemo's Q actually lasts two times as long on buffs, unless they changed it. Um, so then that's why, like, Teemo actually, like, has some potential. But yeah, if you're playing any champion in C or D tier, really rethink, like, Damn, like my clear is gonna my my, my uh, win rate and my, my chance of me winning every game is gonna be a lot harder. If you're playing champion B tier, well, you just want to put the game on fucking hard mode or extreme mode. Sure, if you really want to, really love your champion, it makes sense. If you're playing any champion in A tier, like it's like very reasonable. Like every champion A tier is like okay, like makes sense. Like A tier is very 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 strong. And S tier, bro, you want fucking LP? You don't care about any champion? Learn these champions. They will almost always universally actually be good. Like, this is not just a 14-13. This is, like, these champions will be a staple of the jungle. I think the big 14-13, like, thoughts here is, like, 8. Like, the whole 8 tier is, like, actually has to do with 14-13. These are just, like, guys, like, these are the fucking goats of the jungle right now. So, you want to climb, you play these champions. And these are going to be my closing thoughts. Guys, if you're letting a tier list really persuade how you view the game, and if you think your problem is the champion you're playing, you need to wake up, get out of the fucking matrix, I'll say this every time I make a tier list because I want to be openly honest with you guys. What's stopping you is not the champion you're playing. 
What's stopping you is your gameplay. What's stopping you is not the items you're building. What's stopping you is your gameplay. What's stop your runes are not stopping you. It's your your gameplay. So think about your gameplay more or something you need to improve on. I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of tier list. I'll still keep making these. I still think they're very useful. I actually find I use u.gg and other uh, resources, like other people's tier lists, decently fr frequently. So I, I do find the value in it. But at the end of the day, I fucking climbed to rank 2 using Viego and Jarvin. And, and that was when, like, Viego and Jarvin were, like, okay. Um, and even, like, even the first time I hit Challenger, like, I played, like, an okay champion. Like, Kane was, like, all right. Um, and then and it's just, like, hey, guys, at the end of the day, you can climb very, very high. What you can do, do champ, uh, it, one tricks GG, I think it is. And see if, if your champion, if there's a Challenger player on your champion or a few Masters players, if they're that high rank, you can be that high rank too. You need to figure out what you can do to get to get there. Um, so don't worry too hard about chat. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be doing more in-depth tier lists like this. I think this is way more fun. This is way more uh, helpful. And again, look forward to a noob-friendly tier list along with a higher elo tier list and a middle of the pack tier list coming soon. The Viego guide coming soon. And take a look at the series we've been doing recently about how to climb in low elo. On top of that, how to... Uh, climb in the mid ranks if you guys don't know i also coach take a look at that everything is in the description box below i'll see you guys next time have a wonderful night or day or evening anyway i'll see you guys later peace peace